What's up everybody, I'm back. Today, what we're gonna talk about is how to do an SEO competitive analysis using big data and how that competitive analysis also leads us to finding some major efficiencies in PPC. So the cool part is I'm using my own data. Recently, Sears spent about $36,000 in the last few months to advertise our Google Analytics 360 chops. So I have real data to show you that I don't need to blur out because it's client data. I can be 100% transparent with all of you because it's my data. I'm going to choose to share it with you. So let's go. I want to show you exactly how to do this big data competitive analysis and how I found significant cost savings in my PPC. All right, so where we're gonna start off here first is a little bit in some of the PPC waste or inefficiencies that I found. In my own account, I wanna tell you that I might've even found, I'd say maybe about 30%, of queries that I found somewhat questionable as to why we're spending money on them. So the first thing that I typically do is I bring in a search term report from paid and I join that data to where I'm ranking, okay? I'm also bringing in a set of snippets and I've summed up and created some boxes for cost. So you can see my little um, box on my card, cost, conversions, and count of search term. I also have my little search term box here, which lets me put in different words. But one of the cool things is that you can create multiple boxes. So then if you have a big set of keywords, like a million words that you're looking at at a time or a hundred thousand, you can put in one root word and then another word to get all those words as well. So let's keep moving. All right, so now that you know what I'm looking at, the first thing I wanna tell you is I sort by low click numbers when I'm looking for inefficiency in spend, because as you can see, most of my spend came off of keywords that only got one click. Let me get rid of this. So if you wanna see keywords that only got one click, how much have I spent on keywords that only got one click all year? Here's how you do it. You take your clicks, drop it into a page level filter. What that means is everything on this page is gonna update based on this filter. And I'm gonna say where it is one. Holy smokes, almost a third of all my spend came from single click keywords, which is why I like sorting by single click keywords, because it gets me mining some of these little, uh, these, these gremlins that kind of show up in your campaign. But that's only one. What if I said they got it less than four? Oh no, word value is less than or equal to four. Then I'm gonna apply that and you go, man, that's almost half my spend. So by sorting by low clicks, you start to find little words here and there that you go, I'm not sure 360 property management is uh, what I wanted to pay $14 of my own money to get in front of, or what the heck is SEER AC rating? So let's go into that. This morning, and sorry, you can't see it all right there. Um, I started at 7.53 and ended at 8.09. So you're looking at 16 minutes worth of work. And I think I found a third of our spend that I had questions on. So for your job snippet, one way you can look for inefficient spend is look for categories of snippets showing up that you don't really think you should probably show up for, like jobs. When I click on that, I go, okay, so these consultant words could be right, but if somebody types in analytics consultant as my keyword and my landing page looks like this, that's not really about Adobe. And then you go, oh, Adobe. So right, so I saw Adobe analytics consultant, and then I type in the search term, so I unclick jobs, and then I type in the search term Adobe. And I go, ooh, I spent $262. Now I'm gonna show you in a little bit why that may or may not necessarily be an issue. Um, let me clear this off. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit um, how that might or might not be an issue. Because some of this is, you know, Google versus Adobe, Google 360 versus Adobe. But again, let's look at the intent of my landing page. And then you have to go back and ask yourself, well, it's only 19 clicks. Am I gonna build a custom and unique landing page for that? That is ultimately up to you to decide. Not me. So we looked at jobs. What about places V3 or local? And you go, okay, so 360 property management. Ah, so this could also be a way to use a snippet which comes from organic, married to your PPC data to see, am I necessarily the right answer for some of these questions, which also can lead you down the path of certain negatives. And my favorite is Twitter. Let me show you what that looks like. So with Twitter, it kind of showed me that 
strategy analytics was showing up a bunch. So then I went, well, that's interesting. So then I searched for strategy in the letter A and you go, okay, so ooh, LinkedIn strategy and analytics. Damn, I'm paying some real money here for strategy analytics. And it looks like with Inc at the end of it, that that's probably the name of a company. People are looking for jobs. They're looking for a person that works there. They're typing in LinkedIn. I'm going, ooh, okay, so these are all things that I might want to negate. To be honest with you, this isn't the only client I've seen where people are searching for people's names in a company and clicking on ads. So what you do is you take all the popular names, like a list like 500 of them, Google it, throw them in as negatives. You probably don't wanna be showing up when people are looking for your employees and paying for those clicks and paid. So now that I've identified that strategy analytics as a company, I might wanna to look to do some kind of negatives or change how I'm matching on that word or get rid of it altogether um, so that I don't show up and get those clicks. Let's clear this out. And now I'm back to square one again. Remember earlier how we saw that AC SEER rating right here? Well, okay, it only spent six bucks, right? No big deal, Will. But then I went, well, that's still my six bucks. So uh, I'm gonna type in uh, rating and I go, oh snap, I spent $177 on words that include rating. And you can see I got everything from you know, ton and seer rating, seer rating, seer rating by year. And if you Google it, you'll see pretty quickly what people are looking for. It's got a little something to do with air conditioning. Something else I like to do is look at, my landing page is built to convert, right? So let's go back and take a look at that landing page. If you look at it, you know, contact us, talks about our net promoter score, talks about how we're a reseller. Um, is it right for me? Nice little breakdown. What does it offer? So this is a good landing page if you're looking to convert, but it's not the best landing page if you just have a question. So I start putting in words like can, how, what, and I'm looking at how much I'm spending on those to say there's no way this page probably answers that question well. I'm not saying you have to negate that word. What I'm saying is you should put some scrutiny on that to decide is it worth spending money at this much per click to potentially get in front of people or introduce your business to them at a time where they're not necessarily looking to buy? Maybe that answer is yes. For me, I'm not so sure. So I do can, I do what? Ooh, okay, got it. So I spent $406 on what words? How? Especially if you have a technical SaaS product, people might be typing in how to do different things on your product. Do you really wanna be bidding for those? Probably not in most instances. Now, for those of you that are in, you know, uh, looking for the 301 advanced version of this class, the master's degree or PhD version, the beauty of having all this data in our data warehouse is I can take one of these hypotheses and run it across every client like that and see who's most susceptible to these kinds of queries and then go back and say, does this make sense for that business across every client? It helps me to be more accountable to them when I find one idea in one place to spread it across all and see if we can learn from that collectively. Because we're going after analytics words, one of the things I found interesting when I was digging through my data is the company Wix. Now, by itself, I would imagine most paid search consultants would say, Will, ease up, it's only two clicks, I spent 22 bucks, ease up. But what I know is we're working with enterprises who are going to spend money hopefully on a consultant to help them out. None of my clients are probably on Wix. So then you, you gotta step back and become a consultant and say, what does Wix indicate? Wix indicates a free website that somebody's trying to get analytics on. So then you go and you just Google free website. I'd say pull the top 50 sites that rank for that and negate all their brand names. Because I know ultimately they're never gonna lead to the kind of client that we're seeking. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get two clicks here and 10 clicks here and four clicks on GoDaddy, but in the aggregate, it could be huge. And let me show you just how huge it can be. So when I looked at all these different words, I'm sorry, you can't see them all. It's automate, rating, price, customer, phone, for people looking for phone support for GA, um, you know, how, what, Wix, etc. When I add all these up, our team has spent $14,000 on these words. And some of them have actually converted somehow for us in online leads. It's the closed loop that's gonna tell us if they're really the right offline leads. And my point here is that the majority of these words are one-off clicks. And it's why I try to use different types of tools to bring this data together, to give me sense across different data sets.